All right, what is going on, everybody? It is me, Shifty Hacker, and today we are starting Shifty Skies uh, Tech Talk. This is our first ever episode. We are currently across like country from each other, so we are making it work with what we can. We're That's currently using miles away. <laughs> in Discord, but um, I'm going to be going over the CPU, GPU, computer market, stuff like that, how the GPUs are doing, what's going on with them, the CPU prices, all that, computers. I'm going to be reviewing a couple of... Um, Computer companies like NZXT, uh, Omen, Dell, all that, which computer company you should go to, what I personally recommend. I have a little bit, quite a bit of experience with uh, PCs when I lived back in California. I actually ran my own business. Currently, the computers we are recording on, I have custom built both of them, uh, including Skies. I've got a Ryzen 9 5900, RTX 3080, 32 gigs of RAM. He doesn't even know his own specs, but he's got a Ryzen 7 3700. I know. He's got a 3080 Ti. He's got an Aorus. I've got a For the Win version of my 3080. He's got 32 gigs of RAM. And then we both have a fuck ton of storage, which doesn't really matter. Yeah, I've got like 16 terabytes. I've I got gave like. You also my 16 terabyte hard drives because I bought two of them. Yeah, he bought two. And then what, what happened was my, my computer's case can't fit two of those gigantic hard drives. So I just gave the other one to him because I wasn't using it for anything. Yeah. So I originally bought 32 terabytes, but you know, like who needs that? Nobody. But yeah, um, I haven't even scratched the surface. Of no, me neither, terabyte. dude. I've been installing everything, and I think I have like a terabyte used. Yeah. But I call I call mine the big boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I so I was gonna give him an intro, but we've kind of, I kind of already introduced him for you. Uh, we are gonna be doing this at least once a week minimum of an hour podcast if maximum we like gonna try to commit, we're gonna try to, to commit yeah we're yeah, gonna we'll do I, like I cannot guarantee no because i do this full time this is the, the first episode yeah this is the first episode so we're gonna we're yeah. gonna figure out a day like sundays or something like that when we're both off or yeah. something like that well i mean I'm, i don't ever off this is my job consecration is my full-time job now but um so yeah we are gonna be going over our niches in the industry because we put it out there on the internet because he's into cryptocurrency i'm into computers i go up to somebody and i'm like hey you got a computer in your house and they're like yeah and i'm like well what are the specs and they're like what are specs and i'm like never mind he'll go up to somebody i'm gonna let him explain his part yeah so i go i go up to somebody and i, and I talk to them and they're, they're like oh do you know cryptocurrency and all they talk about is bitcoin and ethereum and they're like oh bitcoin's doing I'm like i don't even i don't even care about bitcoin bitcoin affects the price of all of the other coins usually but it's so basic like if bitcoin was created right now it, it would have no market cap it'd be like it'd be like ape coin it, it, that's it's, it's exactly it's the same value um and ape coins on a th on the ethereum chain so it wouldn't be exactly like ape coin but it would be a shit coin it would be there's nothing special about bitcoin so there's lots of other ones there's thousands of cryptocurrencies i can i've gone through the top 1000 cryptocurrencies and that's what I'll be getting into later when I when I go into the crypto bubbles and we show how we can visualize the markets. There's lots of different ways. This is my favorite way of visualizing the market with crypto bubbles, and we'll get into that. Um, but yeah, cryptocurrency is a hard hobby to have because nobody knows what you're talking about. And it, there's a lot to learn, which is exciting for me, but it's a big turnoff for other people. Exactly. So... I, I gotta I gotta share this knowledge. This knowledge is just useless if I'm not sharing it, right? And so I'm here to share the, share the knowledge, share everything I've learned um, from I've been into this since May of 2020. That's when I first got into mining Ravencoin, and I've I've loved it. It's been it's been great. I've got massive holdings, um, except the market's down. Hey, he's also got me into cryptocurrency mining. Oh, I actually yeah. have set up multiple computers. <laughs> just to um stream it to mine cryptocurrency and other than that like i've got another i've got a computer sitting right there it's got a ryzen 7 2700 in it and a gtx 1070 i actually have two identical computers i have two 1070s I not even know that i have two 1070s two ryzen 7s and then i've got a ryzen 5 in my closet and a 1650 obviously the 3080s in my computer because i get the big boy stuff because i'm a big boy yeah. Do you have any parts you can like grab and show off to the camera? Yeah. What we're talking so about? really quick, this is the processor. My bot, mine came in. The box prime processor came in. See, it's the Ryzen AMD. nine. 
AMD obviously is sm so superior there's, one. There's two big companies that um, make processors. There's AMD and Intel. So we'll go over we in a minute. We usually prefer AMD in their Ryzen series. Yeah. Um, generally. Yeah. Um, I did. I did buy an Intel motherboard. Um, on which Apple. is also in my closet. Yeah. So really quick, you're really not supposed to do this. I just know what I'm doing, but that is a processor. It's got thermal paste on it because it is used, but I don't know if you guys can see. It's too warm. This is a Ryzen 3 3100. It's a four core, eight thread CPU. Nothing big. It was my first ever CPU. And then I went to a Ryzen 5, to a Ryzen 7, to a Ryzen 9, which is what I'm using currently. And then what I have. right here, I've got a graphics card. This little bag is an anti-static bag, so if something were to happen, it will not turn off the graphics card. With pull. all that crinkling, um, your mic works really well, um, but it makes you sound like you're in a tunnel. So oh, okay. It, do it doesn't capture the crinkling of the paper, but it affects your voice. So if you're if you're doing like background audio like that, um, just wait to talk. Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. So really quick, this is a graphics card. This is a GTX. 1650 super this is a four gig gpu it is an msi variant there are a couple fans missing because i moved to idaho or a couple fins missing because i moved to idaho and they broke but yeah so this and you can always replace the fans this That's are something. essential um, if you're gonna get into crypto mining just wait, hold up if you're gonna get into crypto mining you're gonna need to know how to work on a gpu and um, that's not something I've learned yet, but if you want to mine cryptocurrency, networking and working on GPUs exactly. are going to be skills that you need to learn, especially if you're going to scale up your mining farm. Definitely. Okay, what were you saying? So those are the two, like the essential parts of a computer. So the graphics card is like your eyes. It displays everything. So how a graphics card works is the faster your graphics card, the faster it displays it to your monitor. That is how a graphics card actually works. So I have a 10 gig graphics card. It can transmit something to my compute, my computer monitor at 10 gigabits a second. Gigabits, not gigabytes. There's a difference. I'll go over that too. It's like half. It's like half, exactly. He's simple, I'm not. Um. <laughs> so like a GT 1030 and a RTX 3080, yes, they are bigger cards, but the way it works is it the 3080 displays, let's say, eight times faster than the GT1030. So that's how that works because the GT1030 is a two gig card. I have a 10 gig card. He's actually got a 12 gig, gig card because he's got the TI variant. So and as then... this podcast evolves, we will get more specific with the specs of um, when a new GPU comes out, we're going to be talking about like memory bandwidth, L2 cache. All, all this crazy stuff. How many CUDA cores we, and stuff like that has. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get into that. But this is the first episode, so we're keeping it a little little chill. We're not going to get into some crazy um, lingo that you're not going to be able to understand. Because this is an intro. You wanna, we want to um, get your feet wet, but we're not going to like... Dunk you in all the way, I know. Yeah. So, recording is going good. Ten minutes so far. But, um, yeah, basically... This will be our new thing. We've we've taken this very seriously. We both got very decent webcams. I've actually got an XLR, as you guys can see, with my microphone. He's got a Blue Yeti, really good microphone. You can also see it. It's 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 like right there. Um, yeah, we're gonna get very very into this, uh, especially if this goes somewhere. We will update our equipment more and more if it becomes successful. Yeah, let's not do that. But yeah, we both got boom arms too. Seriously. If you're going to get a microphone, get a boom arm because I can just get my microphone out of here. I want it in the shot if, if I wanted, but I want it as close to my face as possible. Almost with the Shiro some 7 b can't bring myself to spend $400 on a microphone yet. If we, this podcast becomes possible, yeah. we will both have XLR mics and they will both be Shiro some 7 bs oh, sure. 100%. And um, I've also, like full disclosure, I've got two jobs. He's... He's doing content creation full time, and I'm I'm supportive of that. But unfortunately, I don't make any money off of um, any of the content creation that I do. So I have a Taco Bell job. That's why we got the <laughs> we got the logo because I didn't want to change my shirt. 
because I didn't get it dirty. So. And then I've got this is this is me. This is my channel. This is Shifty Hacker. I own the trademark actually, so it is my name. Um, our Twitches and our YouTubes will both be linked down below. I don't know if we're gonna make a new channel for this. I really think we should just upload it to our own channels and then branch off from there. We'll figure that out. I think that we should triple upload it, honestly. Triple upload that could work, but um, yeah, we're gonna be doing this a lot more now, and especially if this goes somewhere, we have no problem. All of our links will be down there. I make TikToks. I make a TikTok a day. I need to get him into TikToks, but we are very much. I'm very much into content creation. I upload on many platforms. I upload high quality YouTube videos once a week. Uh, when he makes videos, I edit his videos. I am his editor. Yeah. And sometimes. sometimes when I have time, but, but I do this full time. It's a now. hard project that I don't feel like doing. That's when I tell him to edit. But um, usually I can edit my own videos. Exactly. It's not very hard. I don't have very high standards, you know? No, and I have very, very high standards because the content. I, I upload all my videos in 4K. I record all my videos in 4K just yeah. because I can and have that option. Also, I am not sponsored by Audio Technica. I really wish I was, but I've got Audio Technica headphones on and I've got an Audio Technica mic. I've also got an Audio Technica branded XLR cable. So I throw that out there. I had somebody ask me about my stream the other day. Are you sponsored by Audio Technica? And I said, fuck, I wish I was. Also, yeah. not a child friendly podcast. We're gonna get that out of here. We cuss, we say yeah. shit we're not supposed to. And and also our topics are going to be not not that, towards kids, kids yeah yeah it's going to be really complex topics Hold on. most adults not gonna be sometimes don't even understand but that's why we're here yeah. we're here to simplify it if I walk up to you and I told you the new RTX 3080 Ti had seventeen thousand eight hundred sixty four CUDA cores would you know what the fuck I just said no exactly yeah, no exactly <laughs> I don't know what a CUDA core that's is. why we're here I've heard of it before um I. Um, just like just like you viewer, you've probably heard of a CUDA core before from somewhere. Exactly. You just don't know what it is. Exactly. And we're gonna explain stuff like that. Let me do this really yeah. quick. All right. Um, I can um I can get him into what I what I'm I've got all yeah. these tabs. So up. we're gonna, gonna go. First, or... No, we're gonna let Skyler take over. I'm gonna feed off of him. I'm gonna put in my input. He's gonna share his screen. We've got certain tabs open. Uh, he's gonna do his part first. I'm going to butt in and then I'm going to do my part after and he's going to butt in and we're just going to go from there. So go ahead and share your screen, Sky. Yes, I am doing that right now. And then, sorry, he's in 72030. I have Discord Nitro, so I will do it in um, 1080 got. 60. I got this up um, that I can do. Did I go live already? Yeah, you did. You're already live. You're triple no, live. It's five frames. Okay. Let's make that not happen. Blooper, blooper moment. Blooper. <laughs> okay, so it it auto defaults to better text readability. That works. I have to put it in thirty FPS every single time because it goes in five. Okay. All right. For whatever so reason, it auto goes in. Now we are on Skylar's screen. So the first thing the number one thing i tell everybody when they want to learn how to mine raven coin or they want to learn how to get into cryptocurrency download brave browser why why would you want brave browser i'm not sponsored by brave like i just i'm really passionate and i would love to be sponsored by brave one day but i like i'd like to work for them even but the thing about brave is that it blocks ads it increases the amount of privacy and it's very crypto focused. So you can earn basic attention tokens that are on the Ethereum blockchain and you can send them to um, an exchange. You can send it to uphold um, your own brave wallet or Gemini. I send mine to Gemini because I, because I can earn 1.01% um, .01 interest annually on those cryptocurrencies that I Literally, all I did is open a new tab. Like I can Which, open a new tab like this, and sometimes there'll be an ad there. Sometimes there won't. Like, see how there's an ad right there? I'm getting paid for that. Which, really quick, that zero, what was the number you just said? What percentage is? 1.01. 1.01. 1. Now, that does not sound like a lot of interest, which it's not. But when you've got thousands of this coin that adds up very very quickly so you've got a thousand of the uh basic attention tokens you're getting that on a thousand tokens you're not just getting it on one you're getting it on every token you have figured i just yeah, put that out there because if you look at, if you look at banks interest rates 
terrible. For the dollars, terrible. Absolutely <laughs> terrible because they're in it to make money. And they they don't care about the consumer getting the coin. But that's that's the thing about cryptocurrency. It gives power to the people. Whereas with traditional finance, the power is in the hands of the people with the money. Power is in the hands of the banks and the federal government and the Federal Reserve. And we're not going to get into all the reasons I hate the banks, the government, and the Federal Reserve in this podcast, but crop up from time to time as we yeah. talk about those things. Also, chat, sometimes, so. uh, not chat, sorry, I'm a streamer. Um, yeah. Viewers, I will occasionally switch back and forth. So when Skylar is talking, I will click on him like this. I am now, he is now full screened. Um, and it, our, his screen will be on the bottom. Like right now, he's browsing. I'm going to put it back on his browser. Yeah. And yeah. So another another thing I should mention about Brave is that it's integrated really well with Tor. So what I can do is I can open a new private window with Tor and bam, look, I'm literally connected to Tor. So I can do whatever I want in the Onion browser and it's great. Another another thing is that it's a Chromium based browser. So people say, oh, it's a Chrome clone. It's more than that. It's an improvement on Chrome. It's what Chrome should be. All right. So if you're already used to using Google Chrome, Moving over will be so easy. Exactly. And you can always use um, an anonymous search on Google. I use um, the Brave search engine because I want to help them out with beta testing. So that's why I, I get different results when I look things up like cats. This is not the same um, YouTube page you get for a cat. Actually, it's very similar. I look up cats a lot um, because it's, a, it's the first thing I test. I, I think of to test when... I want to know if the internet's working or anything like that. So that's exactly. why I usually type in cat. But here, here we are. Let's go to crypto bubbles and see how the top 100 are performing. Now here, Monero. Monero is one of the best cryptocurrencies. And Monero is exactly what cryptocurrency should be. The only problem I have with Monero is the name. It sounds really stupid. But, every, but other than that, it's, it's got all the features you really want in a cryptocurrency. It's privacy-based. It's proof of work. And it's very decentralized. Another problem with Monero is that it's only, well, it's most profitable on CPUs. And then when I say profitable, I mean it's not profitable. But it's closest to being profitable because it's, it's not profitable to mine Monero. There's, the difficulty is too high and the, the amount you get and the price of it is too low. So what, what he's, all that's to say is that Monero is undervalued. What he's talking about... <laughs> in valuable wise is it is the most valuable to mine with a cpu that's what he means so the way you obtain monero is you buy it or you mine it with your cpu it is just really hard to do because cpus are not as optimized for mining as gpus are yes and the random x monero mining algorithm is favorable towards cpus and that's intentional and i think in my personal opinion if i made a cryptocurrency i would not make it for CPUs. I'd make it for GPUs because, you know, I'm a GPU miner. But I also mine Monero and I haven't gotten a payout yet because you don't get hardly any coin from mining. But buying Monero is good if you want to um like hide your transaction history, hide how much you have. You can literally use your Monero wallet like a bank account because nobody can see how much you have. Um nobody can see what transactions you're doing. Nobody can see anything. If if you use Bitcoin, where's Bitcoin on here? Um, Zcash is another privacy fake focused one, but somewhere on here we can find Bitcoin. There, there's Bitcoin. Um, with Bitcoin, all they have to do is find your wallet address and your public receiving address. They, they know how much you have, what you're doing with it, and it kind of sucks. And most cryptocurrencies are like that, and that's going to be a problem in the future when it um becomes Currency. more decentralized. When it becomes a mainstream thing, things like Monero and Zcash and a few others like Beam um, are going to be very big because they're privacy focused. So that's a major um, thing that you can you should consider when you're buying cryptocurrency. It's not just the price because they're all going to go up at some point, it, generally, because certain things like UST and Luna. Um, crypto crashes that everyone saw coming and everyone pretends like they didn't see it coming. No, it's, it, it was a scam from the start. And exactly. that's why I don't buy, that's why I don't buy algorithmic stable coins. I don't buy stable coins at all, actually. 
except for like Gemini's stable coin because I can earn 6.9% interest on it. So that's why I, I, I buy like $40 of that a month or something like that. Or I think it's $10 of that, but I, I, it's complicated. I'm not going to get into it. So yeah, Monero, favorite that. All right. BTC, we don't favorite because we don't like BTC, but LTC is a small improvement on BTC. Um, it reduced the fees basically. So this was Bitcoin is one of the first generation um, cryptocurrencies. It was at, there at the beginning. And I think, I'm pretty it, sure it's it the was only the one that survived. First. It's, it's not the first cryptocurrency, but it's the first generation. So there's a lot uh, of oh. cryptocurrencies that died in the first generation. A lot. Exactly. Like a lot of cryptocurrencies died. And the only reason we know about Bitcoin is because it survived. And all the rest of them, I don't even know them because they don't exist anymore. So Bitcoin is the only one that survived that I can think of that it's in the first generation. Now, Litecoin is a second generation one. And a lot of the second generation was just um, copying Bitcoin's code and like changing it a little bit. Exactly. And they didn't change it very much usually. So Litecoin just reduced the fees. I'm pretty sure that's, I'm not an expert on Litecoin, obviously. Apecoin is um, stupid. <laughs> there's there's a lot of there's a lot of these like Shiba Inu or Doge Dogecoin's actually turning into a legitimate product. I just still think it's stupid. But yeah, Shiba Inu and Apecoin are basically the same thing. They're just a token that was memefied up into the yeah, top 100. So it's a token on the Ethereum blockchain, meaning it doesn't have its own blockchain. It just um hitchhikes off of Ethereum's or it it leeches it mooches off of ethereum's blockchain and that's the whole point of ethereum i understand that but i think it's stupid and um i don't like ethereum in general so if you're if you're coming here thinking that i'm gonna be gung-ho on ethereum you're no. wrong i don't like ethereum um it i it could have been done better and solana and ravencoin both do ethereum's job better and so you know and we'll, we'll get into Ravencoin because I'm big into Ravencoin. We are both Ravencoin. very big into Ravencoin. Ravencoin. You, can, you can store your files on the blockchain, basically. That's the use case of Filecoin. That's all I know about it, actually. One inch, um, it's a trading platform that you can trade Ethereum assets on. That's it. Crow, Kronos is used by Crypto.com. It's their currency. Exactly. Ava. Not I don't really know what Kava is to be honest, but um I like watching it because there's one of the apps I'm I use, I haven't bought any Kava, but you can earn like 33% interest on it. So I like looking at it, but I don't buy anything unless I know exactly what it is. Same thing with Curve. It's another one I'm looking at, but I haven't bought yet. Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is kind of cool. It's what Ethereum should be. It's the original vision of Ethereum, and it's undervalued a lot. Um, we look at the year, it used to be like almost $100, undervalued. Um, Ethereum Classic will probably become um, the most profitable GPU mineable coin if, if Ravencoin doesn't take the spot, or Fyro, or Flux, or... Let's get into Ravencoin, though, because me and you are both very yeah. much into Ravencoin. So, Ravencoin's <laughs> probably not in the top 100. It'll be, at the, it'll be at the very top of the top 200. So, um, there it is, right there. Space, uh, where is it? Space 128. So it, it went down a little bit. The problem with Ravencoin is that it's really undervalued lately. So um, we got like 2.2 cents, right? Yeah. 2.2. And th this has the potential, um, the market cap is really low. This has the potential to be a very big project. And it has been uh, for a while. For a while, it has it, been... Okay, let me um, stop you there. It is a really big project. It is yeah. not small by any means. I mean, look at that. The market cap is $236.96 million. That's a lot of money. And yeah. it's ranked 128 out of how many coins? Yeah, there's like so many coins. Thousands of thousands of the, coins. You want to see some really weird stuff? We go to the top 1,000 and these... Salt, weird, like, MDA, Cum <laughs> Rocket, Exactly. There are some it's fucked some up weird... coins out there. There's some and people. Cap, Three million dollars. Exactly. It. It's a meme coin. How they get exactly. there, I don't understand. Exactly. It'd so, be like me that. and him making a fucking cryptocurrency, 
called Shifty Sky's Currency or some bullshit like that. Yeah. With the million dollar market cap. It's never going to go anywhere. That. That's that's the problem with Ethereum is that you can, you can actually do that. do that. You can do that on Ethereum and Algorand. It's too easy to just make some BS cryptocurrency that people think is legit. They buy it and then realize it's a scam. And then so, you are sitting yeah, there making a shit ton of money. Mark. Does this not look like a scam to you? <laughs> Dogelon Mars. So you got to come into it with a little bit of um, common sense. Exactly. So if something's called Dogelon Mars, it's a scam. With a picture <laughs> of a... Okay. But you also like, got to be careful because Ravencoin, it's, it sounds like... It sounds... It sounds like a meme coin. It does. It's a legitimate project. So... The reason it's called Raven Coin is because it's a fork of the Bitcoin code. And I, I talked about that earlier. There's a lot of forks of the Bitcoin code. This one improved a whole lot of things. So it reduced the block time from 10 minutes to one minute. It um, increased the, re the starting reward from 50 Bitcoin to 5,000 Raven Coin, which went through its first halving. And now it's 2,500 per block in this yeah. year actually it went through january of 2022 it went through its very first having and we were both a huge part of that yeah yeah i was i was there before and i'm making about the same amount because a lot of people got off the network exactly. so i'm making about the same amount um so another thing about ravencoin is that it does what ethereum does ethereum puts all its um smart contracts onto layer two so every every coin that exists on ethereum is on layer two I don't really understand what layer two is. I'll I'll definitely look into that, but just know that Ravencoin does everything Ethereum does on layer one. So you can you can argue whether or not one is more adv advantageous than the other, but that's just the difference between Ravencoin, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. So Ravencoin is like a mixture between Bitcoin and Ethereum, and it's also proof of work. Ethereum is moving to proof of stake. Proof of work means GPUs or whatever you're using. There's a whole lot of different other methods, but GPU is the most popular one because it's the it's the hardware that's wired to do crypto mining. There's there's other types of mining like proof of space will um, use your hard drive. I've never tried it. There's ones for RAM. There's ones for pretty much every part on your PC. Except like motherboard. GPUs, um. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it would be possible. No, <laughs> you cannot mine on a motherboard because it runs parts. It doesn't actually have its own parts. Like a motherboard yeah. is useless without all of the components. Right. Go on. Yeah, motherboard's kind of like a. It's like the brain. Rack. It's like, it's like the body of a computer. Like really yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't do it. It's like a spine, I guess. Well, okay, like yeah. Really quick, let me go into here. Stop sharing your screen really quick so we can explain this. Yeah. So really quick. How a computer works is you've got multiple components. We're going to go back into grid view so you can see both of us. It's got also, you guys see another human being in the room. That's my lady back there. Um, how a computer works is you've got multiple essential components. A graphics card is not actually an essential component of a computer. You have yeah, certain perfectly fine without a graphics card you, you just, just can't, can't do, do anything. anything intensive graphics wise so like you have what's called an apu an apu would be something like a ryzen 5000 g so if you look for the little um there's a lot of intel integrated graphics yeah there's a lot like, like it's intel really has a bunch of um apus and pretty much that, all, that's all of another their big problem with buying like buying a pre-built uh intel anything is that you're going to get integrated graphics and that's not good for pretty much anything i can't think of a use where integrated graphics no, is superior not at all not but really quick a um apu is an arithmetic logic unit is it's a cpu but it's an arithmetic version so basically meaning it can run its own graphically intensive tasks which is what a gpu does how i explained before it displays it faster an APU is the same thing. It's a CPU and a GPU in one. They suck. They are awful. You can game on some of them, but not really. Um, that's why you have a GPU, but motherboard is very essential. That's like the body. You've got the RAM, which is like your brain, your memory, which is exactly what RAM is. Oh, you should probably explain the... Um, so if you're going to build a mining rig, 
I'm gonna tell you the parts that you can cheap out on and parts that you need. So you probably shouldn't cheap out on anything, but I mean, you're if you're watching this, you're not like a mining firm, right? You're you're not a business. Yeah, you're you're, you're, you're just consumer. getting into so, it. So if you want to get into mining cryptocurrency, you don't need a crazy graphics card. Like you can mine on a 1030 GT. Four gigs minimum. Yeah, four gigs minimum. Um, no, actually, 1050 what? minimum. Four gig. Yeah, four four gig. 1030 you is only a, a two gig. Oh, okay, you need for most coins these days the DAG file, which is a directed acyclical graph. That's something you learn in in computer science. It's not relevant to really know what it is because it's. Yeah, I, it's I, kind of it's one of those learned, dumb facts. Yeah, I I learned what it is in computer science, and I was like, that's boring, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so okay. that's kind of dumb. Like, I was I was a better person. I didn't know what a directed acyclical acyclical graph was. So the exactly. DAG file, the DAG file for uh, Ethereum is above four gigs, so you cannot mine Ethereum on a four gig card. You can mine Ravencoin. And there's a lot of other projects you can mine on a four gig card. There's probably ones you can mine on two gigs. So just look at your graphics card, look for how much VRAM it has, the amount of VRAM, and you can know. So graphics card, you can cheap out on or use what you already have usually, um, but you want better. Usually better you don't you want to cheap out on the graphics card. The higher the VRAM, which is the gig. So like I have a 10 gig card, he's got a 12 gig card. The gigabytes you have in the graphics card is the more mining power you have, which will increase your hash rate. He's yeah. going to get into hash rate. I know what it is, but he can explain it on a deeper meaning really quick. He's a, I know a lot of the basics in cryptocurrency. He can go more in depth because he is a computer science major. I hated school with a passion and I dropped out and didn't like it. That's for it's not for me. It's not for everybody. Like people say school's not for everybody, but he is currently a computer science major and that's what he's doing. That's why he knows. What the proper term for a DAG file is. Like, I just learned what the fucking DAG file stood for. And I'm sure he just learned what an APU stood for. So yeah. we've got our area of expertise. We know our niches, like we were saying in the very beginning. Yeah, for sure. So uh, what was I saying? So you can, like... Have DAG what, files what are useless? Do, right? What does a <laughs> graphics card do when you're mining? It creates complex mathematical formulas and then solves them, right? <laughs> so it... It does that really, 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 really fast. And it does it and faster lot, based on how much VRAM you have. Go ahead. So you, you, can, you can solve a block for Bitcoin on your, uh, like you can do it on paper. Yeah. For a but bit you can't do it as fast as a com computer can. Battery. And you can't compete against everyone else in the world as fast as um, everyone else is mining. On exactly. Computer, right. So. Bitcoin is not mineable on a GPU. Why? Because it's not profitable. You'll spend more in electrical bills than you will getting the coin. Exactly. So they use ASICs. What is an ASIC? I'll get into that later. Oh, I, boy. I, I'm going to go back to the topic of um, building a mining rig. So what do you need? Um, you don't need a whole lot of RAM. You need enough RAM to run your computer. Two gigs minimum. Like, like open windows. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You can go one gig. One gig, I don't suggest. Two gigs, I don't even suggest. I would suggest going with a minimum of four if you can. Like probably eight. Like, four to eight. To to now, for really quick, Intel is not as RAM hungry as a Ryzen CPU. A Ryzen CPU is a lot more RAM hungry, so you want to hire megahertz on your RAM. Like, I currently have 3,600 megahertz RAM because I have a Ryzen CPU. That is the minimum for my... I have a Ryzen 9 series. 3,600 is the minimum. I should be running at about 4,000. I'm not because that is fucking expensive. He's running at 3,200. He's got a lower, uh, a step below me in processor. So that depends. I don't recommend anything below four. Four is pushing it. I would recommend eight. But if you're doing Ryzen, do dual channel because it uh, likes dual channel. You always want to put it in slots two and four really quick. Most CPU, most um, motherboards have four DIMM slots. A DIMM slot is what you put your RAM into. Sometimes the dim slots are two different colors. The two gray ones are usually the ones in the center. So it's the second from the left and the last one. That's where you want to put your RAM. If you put in the other ones, it's fine. You're just not going to get as much out of it. And if you've got four sticks, it doesn't matter. Just don't put it in the right way because I've seen that done. And when it starts crunching, stop. That's how you know you fucked up and put it in the wrong way. I've done that before. I fucked up my very first RAM kit. I had a 16 gig kit 
and I shattered it. I shoved it in there, turned it on, and it did not work. Couldn't figure it out. Took it out. All the pins on the side were gone. When I, when I explained that one time, I bought a GPU, and we thought it didn't work because we didn't put the RAM oh, in correctly. Oh, so he actually bought a... I think it was a 2080, or no, it was an AMD card. No, it was, it was an AMD. AMD. It was a 5800 XT, which is a really good card. It's an 8 gig card, GDDR6, brand fucking new. This was in the very beginning of my computer stages. This was years ago. This was when I didn't know what I was doing. We put it in. I troubleshooted and troubleshooted and troubleshooted and couldn't figure it out. It just doesn't work. Little did we know, we put his 1070 back in after we had returned the card. And it worked. RAM into place. Yeah, and we're like, oh. both RAMs. So you push it. It has to be flat. His RAM was doing this. The front ends were not clicked in correctly, and I was like, "What the actual fuck?" Because I hit the power button, fans would spin, motherboard would display, everything was good. Graphics card fans would spin. I was like, "Oh, cool, it works." And then it didn't, and I was like, "Well, shit, what the fuck the happened?" The issue was not the GPU. No, the, the issue, issue was, was the RAM. User error. <laughs> Which. I'm kind of glad that happened because I actually got his old 1070 because he got a 3080 Ti and I've been able to build another mining rig and it's allowed us to do cool shit like this and explain it. Awesome. Yeah. So I at one point bought a 3080 Ti for not a very mm. clear reason. I mean, I wanted more hash rate for mining Ravencoin. So next um topic, the storage on the, the system does not need to be it needs to be enough to run like whatever you get want to run an so. ssd 128 gigabyte Absolutely, minimum yes. you don't need get, don't get a hard drive do not boot your system on doing yeah, hard get a, drive get a solid state drive for sure don't get a hard drive but beyond that the capacity <laughs> doesn't really matter it's however much you're going to use so if you're going to use a whole lot of capacity like mining does not take up very much space i think three gigs total for the software yeah or something and very like minuscule. Not, not even like a lot of the stuff isn't even necessary. Like if you're gonna use your computer just for mining, yeah, it's like the lowest amount, like one twenty eight is the minimum. Thirty two gigabytes is like no way more than you want to do one twenty eight because an operating system uses a minimum of thirty two. So like the to boot the Windows onto that drive so you can access your mining software, oh, and, unless and you're gonna go into Linux, which. Hive OS. That is a whole different fucking ballpark that we don't yeah, want to get into. Eventually, eventually. I will get into Hive OS, but I haven't even gotten that advanced with crypto mining. Exactly. So, like when I'm running multiple GPUs, that's what Hive OS is good at. I mean, it's always good, but I've just never used it because it's really complicated and it's a whole other operating system that I have to learn. And I'm if you want to just take a day and sit in front of your computer and be very pissed off and code everything go ahead and use hive be my guest send me screenshots yeah hive hive is complicated um i've i've looked at people using it it doesn't look very user friendly so no um anyway so storage done ram done uh cpu you don't need a crazy cpu just get a ryzen 3 if or whatever or but intel if 3 gonna your, if you're gonna use your computer for like anything else, you want a better CPU. Go account. minimum Ryzen 5 or Intel 5. And now don't, oh, you're like, oh, cool, Ryzen 5. Don't go get a Ryzen 5 1700. They suck. They are comparable to a Ryzen 3. Go get a 3000 or 5000 series. Same with Intel. Go get like a 12 or like a t um, i5 10500. You should, probably, you should probably mention how much like stuff stuff like this costs. So really quick, so if you want to go get, um, actually, I could throw that onto uh into my category so really quick i'm gonna share my screen or something like that? uh no i'm gonna do this watch all right so really quick click plug this is my twitch shifty hacker this is his twitch sky skyfall make sure to follow those i'll put those down in the description but really quick we're gonna get into cpus so right here we've got a ryzen 5 5600 it is a six core, 12 thread CPU. It is $174. It is really good. Now that is not an APU, meaning it does not have onboard graphics. Here is an i5 12600K, the K meaning it is overclockable. Certain Intel CPUs aren't, are overclockable. Most of them have integrated graphics. And then you got Ryzen. They are every single Ryzen CPU, even the Athlon series is overclockable. To an extent, the K series of Intel are overclockable. But right here, you've got a 10 core, I learned something new. Exactly. You've got a, a 10 core thread CPU here. 
Uh, how many threads? I don't actually know. I don't see that. But yeah. So like, look right here. Intel UHD Graphics 770. Meaning that little slot on your motherboard that is a display port or a HDMI port. You can plug that into if you have integrated graphics and it will display. That sucks. Don't do that. Make sure biggest PC error I've seen. Plug your HDMI or display cables into your graphics card. If not, you will regret it. You're going to be like, why is my 3070 performing like shit? Because you're not using it at all. So you've got stuff like this. You can. I'm going to get into GPUs. So you don't need expensive GPU. Really quick. Right here, it shows on my Amazon account. This was my very first GPU. It is a 1660. Open what to mine. Open what to mine too. Um, I'll do that when you go back to your topic. This is a 1666 gig. This is actually my little brother's it. PC. A uh, decent card, but something like, see, look, a GT1030 right here. Two gigabyte card. That is not what you want. You could go one above that and get a 1050 for four. It's a four gig card. A little bit more expensive, much worth it. You can actually mine most coins with that. And then you start getting into the RTX series, 3060s, 3050s. Don't ever get that card. That card is shit. 3050s suck. They are comparable to 2060s. Why would you get a 2060 with ray tracing? It doesn't make sense. But you can go into the you can get into the bigger cards such as here we go 6900 XT. That is top of the line AMD. That is our second tier GPU. They've got the 6950 XT, which is their newest one. You've got the 3080 Ti stuff like that. Um. Let's and see. there's many different ways to buy GPUs. I got mine from Newegg, their Newegg Shuffle, which means I got MSRP. I mean, I, I did pay $2,000 for it. The reason is because it also came with a really, really good motherboard. A Z590 AOS Elite. To, yeah. Excuse me. To be exact. But also, we're on Newegg. I much prefer Newegg. I like Amazon for certain things, like my webcam is my microphone. I got all that from Amazon. My GPU, my CPU, I got both of them from Newegg because it is just much better. The pricing is better. They're more in stock, and I know I'm getting it from Newegg. On Amazon, anybody can sell. On Newegg, only Newegg can sell. Or certified resellers, such as MSI, CyberPower, all of that. So, like, you've got all kinds of different cards here. You've got a GT730. Terrible card. Can't mine on it. 1660 super you can mine on that 2060 you can mine so pretty much any of the 16 series or the higher class 10 series so 1050 to the 1080 1650 to the 1660 2060 to 2080 3050 you can mine on i wouldn't mind i wouldn't suggest yeah, that i wouldn't i wouldn't suggest any reason to buy a 3050 no like there's there's nothing unless you get one for free sell it but <laughs> Um, and then you can go 3050 all the way up to the 3090 Ti. Now, if you've got a 3090 Ti, you don't give a fuck about mining because you can afford a 3090 Ti. Yeah, exactly. But um, and then if you're in the future and you're thinking, oh, what about my 40? Yeah, of course your 40 series card. Yes, of course. <laughs> mine cryptocurrency, your 50 series, whatever comes out after, it will be able to mine. Yes, very much so. Like, yeah, uh, my they didn't list. No, no. Yes, your 40 series GPU will be able to mine any of these new cards. Now, hold on. If you've got a PNY or a Quadro, which is a 3D rendering card, good luck mining. It's a 48. You're thinking, oh, cool. It's gonna I work. got this. It's gonna work. Yeah, I got this Quadro and it's 48 gigs. So I should have a shit ton of pass rate, right? No, you cannot mine on those cards at all. You can game on them. You can mine on them. However,. You're gonna spend more in electricity than you will get in hash rate. Exactly. Because they're not efficient um, for mining. They are so now. You, you, you want a 3D you render? The, you can open the um, mining software and mine, and it'll work. But it's not profitable no. because they use more power than they would make mining. Now you want to go 3D render and work for NASA from home? Be my guest. That is a fantastic card. It will render videos and objects and stuff like that. Insane. So like. A PNY or a Quadro card, if you're game designing on like Unreal Engine or Unity, it's going to be lickety split. It's insane. They work so yeah, fast because that is what into, they are optimized for. I just got into Unreal Engine and it's freaking cool. It is amazing. It is awesome. Okay. So, yeah. You want me to keep going or do you want to get back into... Um, yeah. So, CPUs, um, we already talked about. We got low-end and high-end. Low-end is 
i3, Ryzen 3, high end is Ryzen 9, i9, i9. 7. Uh, yeah, so you don't need, it's not CPU intensive if you're mining with a GPU. If you're mining with a CPU, then I mean, I guess like do whatever you want. Now, you know more if about you're mining with the CPU, don't use the stock cooler. No, get a tower cooler or what I would suggest is both of our CPUs have and we have an AIL. It is an all-in-one water cooling system so you don't have to do any of it yourself you don't have to run so is tubes that what AIO stands for? all in one yes so it all oh. an area was an all in one it's an all in one cpu cooler so the the That's water comes pre-installed it runs through uh the tubes it's got its radiator you want decent fans now i'm gonna get into this part a case because i'm very much into thermals you don't have to have a case you can have what's called the test bench a test bench is something that makes your... Uh, you do need to have a way to control the temperature yes. of the area. If you're going to mine cryptocurrency, you need... Heat is going to be a major problem. Elect electricity and heat. So you got to have good cables for electricity. they got to be high quality. Everything. Your connectors, if you're going to use risers, everything has to be high quality. That's something you cannot cheap out on. Really quick. This right here, this is a um test bench so like see it's got some usbs but look right over here is where you would um put your gpu uh your c your cpu motherboard would go right here your ram would go right here hard drives power supplies would go underneath stuff like that now these are really great open air concept cases are really really nice you can also build for mining as long as you put fire retardant on it you can build a um wood one yes whatever you want I mean, you can I make it as much as you want. Woodworking, you can totally, as long as you fireproof it, you can um, build a case out of wood. Now, it'll work. he says that, beautiful. yes, fire retardant is very necessary. If you are mining and your GPU lights on fire, you did something wrong. You did something very wrong, meaning you overclocked it to the fucking beaches or and like one of your cables or one of your cables is shitty. An electrical fire or something, something like that. It shouldn't be an issue. You should never run into the issue of my computer's on fire. Right? Exactly. <laughs> you should you should take into account certain things, and it's it's very much going to be a user error issue for your computer being on fire. Yes. Um, you did something massively wrong. Very, just in very, case, very much you so. Want, you want your computer if something goes on fire, you want it to like stay like because it'll usually be an electrical fire, so it'll stay like where it is. I'm not a fireman, right? I don't. I might have said something wrong there. I don't. I don't. And if we did, we don't claim any responsibility. About, we should. You shouldn't come to me for advice about how to start a fire, because <laughs> that's what you learn in firefighting. You learn how to start fires. Um, <laughs> I had an uncle who was a firefighter. Um, but yeah. So le electrical fires are gonna be like an issue to keep in the back of your head, but it's not gonna be something you're gonna run into. Yeah. I've never had an electrical fire. I've never even seen someone who has had an electrical and fire. Some coming from somebody who is running two PCs off of the exact same outlet. I'm actually running three power strips, two PCs off of those power strips, and I've had zero issues. Most of them nowadays are updated with stuff like that. So if you run into that issue, you're either living in a house that was built in 1700s, or you bought a shitty cable off of Wish for yeah. 17 cents, and the shipping was 18 cents, and you got a 45 cent fucking cable. My math was wrong there. I understand that, but don't cheap out on cables. That is the biggest thing. Yeah. SATA cables, power cables, transfer cables, any of that stuff, USB cables even, don't cheap out on them. That is the biggest cause for an electrical fire, especially your power supply. So the biggest problem I've seen... Do not cheap out on your power Do supply. not buy a white-rated power supply. efficient power supply. So I have the an most e efficient. EBGA Supernova. I've got an 80 plus gold, which is the third tier of rating which is still really good then you've got platinum and then you've got titanium an 850 watt titanium power people... supply is like 300 dollars. he's got a he's actually got the he's got a 750 he's yeah, got an evga supernova 750 watt gold we both have gold rated they're 10 year warranty meaning your power supply will last you for 10 years guaranteed if not you call them say hey my power supply took a shit they're gonna say why you, they want you to send it back to them. They're going to diagnose it, and then they're going to give you a new one for free because there's a 10-year guarantee on those PCs, uh, those power supplies that you buy. Don't go buy an Antec or a Phantom Power or something that's not big. Don't buy a smaller brand, smaller branded um, power supply really quick. I'm going to get back into my section. So you definitely recommend EVGA. I'm going to go into PC companies and who you should go with 
based That's on a good idea. Yeah. something you like can bounce that. back and forth. This is nice, actually. So really quick, NZXT, I recommend them 100%. NZXT. And with, so don't... this is their top of the line. This is a streaming pro PC. This comes with a B550 motherboard. Fantastic. Uh, Windows 10 has got a Ryzen 7 5800, really high tier um, CPU. It gives you the base speed number of cores. Comes with an NVIDIA 3080. And it comes with a 750 watt bronze power supply. Now, bronze is okay. It is not terrible. It's got a five year warranty in them. It's not going to light on fire. You might want to replace it within three. Now, HP. Oh boy. They've got same same specs here. Pretty much same specs. This is a 3070. It's an 8 gig card. 3070 and the 3080. It's 3070s here, 3080s here. They're not that much better than each other. Now, yeah. notice. 800 watt, 80 plus gold certified ETX power supply. Now, notice how they do not no list the brand. Just because it's gold rated, it could be a terrible brand. Doesn't mean it's good. Don't go with HP. We're going to actually X them out. We're going to skip over Alienware. They're their own fucking ballpark. We're going to just do budget really quick. So I want a desktop and I want a $2,000 computer. Games doesn't really matter. I want NVIDIA next. No preference. We're going to show the results. All right. Let's see. Two th here we go. This is the, sa uh, the same right here. So we both prefer NVIDIA over AMD for GPUs. Yes. And the reason for that is because NVIDIA is more powerful. What AMD is really good at is if power efficiency. So with mining, they can um, have really good um, hash rates for the amount of watts they're using. But they're, even their best cards are massively outperformed by NVIDIA's yes. best cards. So CyberPower, in my opinion... One of, if not the worst rated PC companies for $2,009, for $2, you're getting i7-12700K. I almost bought from them. A, a 3070 Ti 8GB. Now, here we go. Not to. Standard 600 watt 80 plus gold high power supply. That's the problem. They've got a... 12700K, which uses a minimum 125 watts, and a 3070 Ti. The Ti versions tend to use more car, uh, the card because they are oh, more my, powerful. My card uses 400 watts, about 400 watts um, when it's mining. There we go. So that, That's just a, like, like putting a banana next to it, you know, to, for scale. Exactly. Now, we're going to close out of these. NZXT, in my opinion, go with NZXT. Alienware. <laughs> cool. Their computers look really good. They do. Their computer, look at this. Look at this nice design. It looks really cool. Yeah, you see got, that front panel? We got probably this exact computer in um, our game design class at the college I go to. They and, suck. Ryzen oh, yeah, 7 5800 big problems X. Already. 3080. Where's the power supply? Dark side of the moon, 750 watt platinum power supply. What? Dark side of the moon. I've been in the computers cool. for years. Have you ever heard of a dark side of the moon? I have no idea. Exactly. They cheap out on a lot of their stuff. Their PCs are very suffocated. I have watched numerous reviews on Alienware. The cases look cool. Now, if you want an Alienware PC that bad, I suggest getting a drill and a drill bit that can drill through plastic and making about 700 holes in the front of your computer so it doesn't die. Now, you'll get a 3070. That's awesome. All right, in this case, a 3080. And a Ryzen 7 5800. Now, cool. They don't list their motherboards because they use OEM motherboards, meaning they buy thousands of them for next to nothing, and these are awful they can only support like 3000 megahertz ram or 2666 which you definitely do not want so when you're building a computer the base component besides the case is the motherboard so you never for any purpose want to cheap out on the motherboard the motherboard no. is 
You, your, comp your components can only be as good as the motherboard. The motherboard supports whatever else you want to do with it. Exactly. So whether you're building it for gaming or mining or whatever you want to do or with productivity, it. productivity, editing, something like that. Like, you want a good motherboard. And they, they, make, com they make gaming motherboards. They make mining motherboards. Um, I mean, you can mine with a gaming motherboard. As long as you're using, like, one graphics card, it's not going to make a difference. But exactly. if you're running multiple graphics cards... You might want to invest in an H110 Pro BTC Plus or something like that. Where um, I know where you got that from. For mining. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we actually might do it one day. Yeah, we might do a stream on this channel. We might um, do a stream on this channel playing something called Crypto Mining Simulator. And it is. Or PC Building Simulator. Or PC Building Simulator, which we have no problem doing. It is. Or we'll wait till PC Building Simulator 2 comes out because there's a lot more components. But I bet, yeah, and there'll be an audience for it. So. There will be, and, but Crypto Mining Simulator has um, why can't I think of the name? What are they called? H110 Pro BTC. No, the mining rig and ASIC. They have ASIC. They have yeah. all kinds of components you can use. They've got very accurate and it'll teach hash you a rates. Lot about how to build a. Computer it will teach you how to build specifically a mining computer. Now you can build a gaming computer in it. It's got can. a very in depth tutorial. It's. A little bit of a cheaper game. I'll actually link it down there. I'll uh, grab the Steam link and I'll put that yeah. down there. I highly recommend it. Once again, not endorsed or sponsored by them at all. That'd be amazing. It's a well-made game. It's not a perfect game. No. I aspire to make a better game than what they made. And it would be awesome if um, you and I could collab on making a game that's Crypto Mining Simulator, but better. Exactly. It would be, it would be awesome. We'd update it with the new um, yeah. components every once in a while and update the hash rates to make sure they're accurate. It'd be that's awesome. that's what we want um eventually that's a goal you know for the first episode we, we listed a goal and we'll see if we ever achieve it by episode know? 100 if we ever make it that far we'll have some stuff like that so really quick while i'm on the topic of gpus there's really big company out there called we're Intel. never gonna leave the topic of gpus by the way gpus are like gonna be something we're gonna be yes. talking about for forever while we're on so. the topic currently Intel was like, you know what? AMDs are GPUs. Well, why don't we? Is that the Sapphire so, ones? No. They've got what's called the Intel Arc. Oh, is that I, that came out recently, right? Yeah. We're going to put this right here. The Intel Arc. I'm going to put this. Did you see the words expectations low? I did. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Intel is setting expectations low. We see your Discord. Oh, boy. Oh, I put these on the wrong computer. Wrong screens. Sorry, yeah. guys. Okay. Blooper. Blooper moment. Nah, we'll leave that in there Whatever. for fun. All right. <laughs> so, this is what the concept arc looks like. They are... Oh, decent. list the problem with that image right there. The first thing you see. Oh. What's the problem with that image? Boy. <laughs> so, problem with this image. One, it's a big GPU. There's no support mm -hmm. under it. Secondly, look where his cords are. His cords are underneath the GPU. That's what you don't want because GPUs suck air in and blow it out the back side of it. It can pull in the cords and get stuck in your fan, break your fan. Cable management is awful. And, and secondly, and the, like the big, all, the big glaring issue is there's no fans. <laughs> what the heck? Like on the on the front of it, there's no fans. Unless the fans are on the other side, and I just like led to nothing there. Possibly, no. but there are numerous problems. So the Intel uh, A750 GPU. Out, actually, now nah, we'll leave that in there because you made a good point. There were problems. So the this is the Arc. This is the 3060. The 3060 is a 12 gig card. This is also I think this is an 8 gig card. It's not performing. That much higher than a 3060. And now this is top of the line for an Intel Arc at this point. From what they've released, from the, what the they've... The best they could make. The best they could make so far is competing with a 3060. Not mm -hmm. even the TI. It's the budget version of the newest generation of graphics cards. Which will... It's not going to be the newest generation for a while. I mean, they're coming out with the 40 series, like, probably this year. Like, later this year. Now that's next. So, that's what it compares to a 3060. It's I'm the last. It's the current generation that's already like 
old, right? And it's the cheapest GPU besides the 3050, which came out as an even more budget option. And the whole thing about that is that it's awful. Yeah. Like, it's just bad at everything. We're going to get into the 4090 graphic card. Now, really quick, the 3090 Ti is a 24 gigabyte VRAM card. It is phenomenal. The same as the 3090, right? That's a little that's bit faster. Amount of gigabytes. Yeah, same. Well, it's, like the, it's the, got faster the cores and teraflops. The same. Yeah, teraflops. It's and got the more. and the important thing for mining is the memory speed. The clock is not as important as memory. The memory, memory speed on the 3090 Ti is high. Yeah, that's so that's really quick. The improvement. Basically. Nvidia's RTX 4090 is still set to debut first out of all the next gen uh, Lovelands graphics card, and the GPU should arrive in October, according to the latest from the rumor mill. But there are worrying factors which could interfere with the plan. We have a leaker here. The 4090 Ti, or the 4090... Move your mouse so that it's um, going along the words while you, like, yeah. will be a 450-watt graphics card. By itself, it will destroy a 600-watt power supply. You're going to need a minimum of 850 because most CPUs nowadays run over 100 watts on their own. So, yeah, you've got 450... 450 plus 150 more than about 600 it's not exactly that much but you cannot run these on a 600 watt power supply now the other thing about um power supplies is that they are um most efficient at close to their maximum utilization so you want to calculate how much power you're going to use and then use that amount of power when you're mining specifically when you're mining any other use case it doesn't really matter but for mining, you want to get close to the limit for your um, power supply. Yeah. Not You don't want to exceed that limit, but you want to get close because that's when it's the most efficient. Exactly. And then they're talking about releasing a new uh, RTX Titan. The Titan GPUs are, oh my lord, a fantastic card. They are gaming ready. They are VR ready. They're mining ready. They are just good cards. But they're gonna run you run you like six grand. So the 4090 Ti will thankfully be a part of. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you guys can see our faces. The 4090 Ti will be part of the Ampere architecture, and which is their current architecture, which works really well. They have figured out many many things on what to do. Uh, we are gonna get into GPU pricing. So, yeah, GPU pricing prices skyrocketed in 2020, and they haven't really. They're just starting to come down. The uh, 3090 and, Ti, which was never sustainable, and is at its two thousand dollar MSRP currently, this is closer to sixteen hundred and fifty. The new 3080 Ti is selling for seventeen uh, percent. What you're reading on screen? It is. That's not. I can't see it. Oh, uh, Discord. The. Uh... Yeah, viewers can. Hold on. Do this, do this, do this. All right. Back to full screen. Back to full screen. Oh, All right. Here is the chart. The chart. So the 3090 started out at $4,000. It is MSRP at two. We are down. So much. This is April 2022. This is very accurate. The 3090 is down to $2,000. 3060, 3070, 3050, and the 3080s are all down just about their MSRP. Here so we go. When, you're buying, when you're buying a GPU, when you're thinking about cryptocurrency mining, is it better to mine or to buy? I say it's better to buy silicone. And so instead of holding cryptocurrency, when you want to make it into a business, what you want to do is you want to convert your crypto mining holdings into silicone. So you want to buy more GPUs with the amount of um, crypto that you have. I haven't done that yet. I could if I really wanted to, and now would be a good time to. It's just I'm living in an apartment and yeah. um, a good environment for scaling up. Because right room is an issue there. Which... Yeah. It's not your fault. But. Yeah. But I will get a house. 
eventually. <laughs> eventually. Um, then, like maybe one day when if we make it this into a business, and this is very possible for us, we will get a warehouse and we'll fill it with um, mining computers and ASICs and whatever else we need and we'll water cool and it'll be awesome. Yeah. We'll have people working for us because they'll be that profitable. But exactly. we're not there yet, so we got to do the work. The the work that people working for us would do, we got to do ourselves. And so do you, if you're gonna follow along on this journey, yeah. um, in your own separate way. Very much so. Not at it all following this journey. <laughs> not easy by any means to get into, but uh, so, we don't have any more stuff to share. We're just gonna get back into I do. talking. I have stuff to share. No, 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 no more sharing screens. It doesn't work very well. We got to figure that out. So we have to talk. We can put stuff up on the screen, but that makes it a little bit harder to see because of how our layout is. Like I said, this is a jumpstart episode. Um, we need to get more and more into it. We need to figure out some better software to do. But right now, Discord is working fairly well for us. The camera quality is pretty good. Microphone quality is really good. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give it back over to Skylar and talk about more about crypto. Okay, so like I said, um, when you're mining, what you want to care about is power. So you want to minimize power costs. How do you? How? What are some ways you can do this? Buy solar. I just got hired for a solar sales company. It's called Lumio. Um, buy solar from us. <laughs> There's a little ad for a um, a job I'm working for. So yeah, um, decrease your electricity costs any way you can. You can do this by, like I said, solar. Um, keeping your room cool um, is also something you should do. But really quick, overclocking. with the keeping your fan cool, if you've got your, not your fan cool, your room cool, if you've got a ceiling fan, run it all the time. Now, you're like, oh, well, I've got an AC. That's fine. Your AC's over here. Your computer's over here. That air is never going to reach that. It's so when a GPU, with most computers, you get your three fans in the front, and it's pulling the air in, it's taking the hotter off of your GPU, and it's going. Heat rises, that means it's going to certainly come back around, and it's just going to keep pulling in hotter and hotter air, meaning you're going to thermal throttle, you're going to lose hash rate, stuff like that. A ceiling fan, or just some sort of fan near your computer, constantly fluctuates that air around. You've got AC, yes. or it just keeps the air cool in there. Never have a computer in a room with no airflow because that is very stagnant and the hot, your computer box will be here. The hot air will just sit right here. It will currently just consistently put hot air through. It will, it will run. It will never shut itself off because all the new components are made to not do that. But like I said, have a fan running at all times, even if it's some little fan, some little tower fan like you guys can see right here I've got running. Keep yeah, air flowing somewhere. Um, it was like thirty dollars, like, and that thirty dollars is going to save max, you right? so much. You're gonna get a lot more profit just from that thirty dollar fan. We promise. Trust me, we've experienced it, and I'm actually a really bad example of it. I'm currently doing it, but I have my computer very set up and cooled. Don't put your computer under your desk. Also, don't put it on carpet. That will suffocate your power supply. So how the power supply works is it's here, the fans underneath it. And it's blowing air. It's sucking air in and pushing it out the back. It's going to suck in dust and hot air and shit from your carpet that you don't want in your power supply. Biggest thing to take care of is your power supply. Because if your power supply shorts out... That's that's another thing we should mention. It, it's running... Clean your computer. Yes. Clean your computer once monthly. a month. Once a month, yeah. clean your computer. Like, I've got a no little... No matter where you live, you think there's not a lot of dust where you live. Dust filters, it, too. We're going to get into that. But if you have the option to get a computer case with a dust filter and it costs 25 more bucks, do it. Because you're going to have to take apart your GPU to clean up the dust, which you don't want to do because you're at a higher risk of breaking something. You're going to have to take apart your radiator, yeah. which you don't want to do. I know how to do all that, but I've also got three dust filters in my computer. Don't ever take them off. You're like, oh, it's restricting airflow. No. I highly recommend. I'm not sponsored by Corsair. I really wish I was. The 4000D Airflow. They come with great airflow. There are holes all over the front of it. I can actually show you. This is the front of my computer. This is the airflow. There is no restriction here. If you think, oh, these little lines, no, non restrictive at all. And then behind that is my dust filter, keeping my computer perfectly clean. Can't see it right now. This thing's got a little bit of dust on it. I'm going to wipe it off before I put it back on. And if you're building a minor computer, 
you don't need RGB. I would highly suggest Arctic, Noctua, uh, Corsair. Yeah. Do a hot, get higher end fans. Don't cheap out on your fans because the lower quality yeah. fans, so, the less airflow you get. Let me let me list the things that you cannot cheap out on. Fans, cooling, whatever cooling you're gonna do, don't cheap out on that. Yeah. Um, power, cables, everything like that. Do not cheap out on your cables. And I guess your case kind of like make make airflow happen. You can okay. Kinda you kinda can cooling. cheap out on your case. You can get a twenty five dollar case. You with can have high no quality, case. yeah, you need some decent airflow by it. You can have a twenty five dollar case with forty dollar fans. Like I bought, I just completely. If you went, can have an open air, like on a bench between, like on a piece of plywood computer. You can have that. You just got to get good airflow. You got to have some way to cool it, and that's not a recommended setup. Like I wouldn't, I would no. ever do that. But that's something you could do, and you can build your computer like that. And I was amazed to find out that that's possible, right? So don't cheap out on power, on cooling. Um, probably, I guess, your GPU. You probably want a better one. Um, don't pretty much get a single fan GPU. It is going to be $30 less. Get a dual fan because you've got two fans constantly running and circulating air. The single f fan GPUs are terrible. They have They are suffocated so much. I get it. They're smaller. They're a little bit cheaper. Spend that 30, 40 extra bucks and get a dual fan variant of your card. We both have triple fan variants of our cards because we have big ass cards and we are, we do very intensive stuff on them. Like we play games and stream and play the games at high quality all at the same time. And we need that cooling. Like I, I have my GPU currently overclocked and I never get above 50 C while gaming or mining. Yeah. Well, with mining, it's going, that's, that's something we should explain. With mining, the reason you want a good GPU is because it's gonna use, it's gonna utilize 100% of your GPU. I've All got a few programs time. open right now, and four, four to ten percent of my CPU is being utilized when I'm just doing this, and about 25% of my GPU is being utilized right now. When you're mining, that's gonna be a hundred percent. And since I dual mine, I mine on my CPU and my GPU. It's both of them at the same time at a hundred percent <laughs> utilization. So oh, really quick, I can the reason show you guys... it uses so much power, the reason we have to care about power so much is because it's running your computer at maximum power for graphics. And then also if you're CPU mining on your CPU. Really quick, I can show you guys. So I am using 48% of my CPU. Now I am recording this in 4K. I have a bunch of tabs open and I'm also running wallpaper engine in the background. I have a lot of intensive tasks going on. I'm also running like 800 programs in the background, but I can afford to do that. Now, when I stream and stuff like that, it goes a little bit higher. When I mine, my CPU usage drops to like two because it doesn't take much. My GPU, so like right here, I, my GPU is being used 28%, mainly because I'm recording with my GPU. I'm using NBank. But like I said, cooling power, like he said, I mean, power and cooling very, very much matter when you're coming, when you're doing yes. stuff like that. Things that don't matter, the amount of storage space you have, as long as you have the minimum storage space, you're good. As the long as it's an speed, SSD, though, make sure it's yeah, an you SSD. Yeah, you want the speed of the SSD to the work. The reason you want an SSD versus a hard drive, hard drives are good for games. A hard drive is a hard disk drive. Hard disk. There are six disks that are rotating in there. To upload media to it to hold it. Of course, we are hypocrites because we both have hard drives in our yes, computer. Yes, but, but we both have SSDs in. in our computer. Yeah, we do not put hard drives in your mining rig. No, that's, that's another reason they get hot because they have moving parts in them. The SSDs have no moving. moving parts. Yes, SSDs get hot because data is being transferred on and off of them all the time. Yeah, there's but there's, there's still electricity happening. There's still electricity, but, but there's no parts. moving parts. Like, you'll never have to worry about your SSD overheating. If you do, that means you're running it in Death Valley with no airflow. That's, like, the only way. You really don't ever have to worry about that. Even your hard drives, they're so efficient nowadays, and they are so well optimized. They don't really get that hot. You can actually buy hard drive coolers. The reason they would have be hot one. is because you're mining, and the whole area around it is hot. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But back and, to you. And your GPU, you can use it, like, when you're mining... And an extra use case of mining is literally using it as a heater because your room, wherever you put it, is going to get really hot. So airflow is important. 
But if it's in the winter, go hard. Like, go as hard as you want. I'm like, I kidding. live in Idaho. Winters here get down to, like, 10. 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That is, like, I don't know what that is in Celsius. I don't know the conversion. But that is cold. That is below freezing. That is at the point where water freezes outside. I'm yeah. going to run the dog shit out of my computer. Because I'm going to have that little window right there open with that little fan pulling air in. And it's going to be, there's going to be icicles on my ceiling when I'm done. So run the hell out of your computer the colder it is. Now, if you yeah. happen to have an in-room AC, meaning you've got a little tube running to your uh, window and you're allowed to run it all the time or can afford to run it all the time, run it at like 65 because your computer is going to love you. It is going to have nice, cool air into it all the time. How it works is it's taking that air and it's blowing it over all your parts. Always have a positive airflow chamber. So, meaning... I have six pressure. fans in my, yeah, positive, well, it could be called a chamber too, positive air pressure, meaning you have three intake, three exhaust. Now, if you that's have- That's equal. That's equal. You can have three to two. Like you can have, you can even have three to one, depending on what you're doing. You can have three intake, one exhaust, meaning you're going to have a little bit of stagnant air in there, but you don't want that. I've got three on the front, my CPU cooler, my AO is on the top, still pulling air out, it's pulling cool air out, and my rear fan is pulling out hot air. There's a lot to go into that, but we've already been doing this stretching. for an hour and 18 minutes. I would like people to actually watch this thing all the way, I don't want to make it longer than like two hours. So back to you, Sky. You said hour 18 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, um, so I'll just... Let's pull something up um because you're gonna edit out the parts where we make mistakes too so it's gonna be a little bit oh yeah you're um, gonna sit here and help me edit it i'm gonna <laughs> share my screen share my screen did it work no not yet okay no my screen screen one uh yep let's go live okay so this is um what to mine so Whatever card you have, it's got all the those cards, and it doesn't have like everything. I we looked um for something a while ago, and it didn't have it. Ten seventy Ti. Here, here I can go. Here's ten fifty Ti. You can mine on a ten fifty Ti. Here's what you can mine. You can mine Ravencoin. You can mine Nixoa. I've actually never heard of this one. Um, as I was doing this research, I thought it would be interesting to bring it up because I don't know what this is. So, it's a Litecoin. You, you, it's a, a version of Litecoin too. Yeah, it's interesting. Market cap volume. Or no, it's converted to Litecoin. I don't know. Oh. That's weird. Hmm. But it's it's on the Kapow algorithm, so it uses the same algorithm as Ravencoin. I like Ravencoin. The, and of the course, Kapow algorithm the, is also really, really good. Really efficient and works really well. So An interesting thing about the Kapow algorithm, I, I will do a um, podcast on the like Ravencoin. That, that's coming. That's coming soon. All right, because I, I have done the research. I actually did a presentation about it. So anyway, getting back to this, um, Ethereum is what everything else is based off of. So if it's more profitable than Ethereum, because Ethereum's green right here, um, then you probably want to be mining it. Yeah, That's just a thing. So Beam, the hard thing about mining Beam is that you have to log into the wallet within 12 hours of receiving a pay payment, and it doesn't notify you. So... That's why I don't mind Beam. Beam is awesome, except for the way that their wallet works. Yeah. And so, yeah. Ergo. Ergo's nice. It's not listed on very many exchanges. And the wallet support is awful. Um, I did find a wallet that works pretty well with it. Um, I don't remember which one it was. I think it's Via Wallet. Via Wallet works pretty well. You can also... Um, use Ravencoin. The thing about the thing that I really like about Ravencoin, besides all the other things that I like, is that their wallet support and their exchange support is really good for an altcoin. Of course, every exchange and every wallet will allow you, or every multi-coin wallet will allow you to exchange and hold Bitcoin, and usually Ethereum and Monero and Zcash and all, all these big ones up here. Yeah, they'll usually allow you to. Um, exchange those and hold those so ryo i haven't looked into ryo a whole lot but i don't like this algorithm i think it's kind of stupid um so i don't really mind anything that uses that algorithm i haven't looked into the octopus 
algorithm. But the thing about Conflux is that it's made in China, and I just have an inherent distrust of things that are um, like from the Chinese Communist Party or like an area controlled by them. So I will eventually look into it, but I haven't at the at this moment in time. Zero uses ProgPow. It's very similar to um, KaPow with Ravencoin. It's just a little bit different. I couldn't find a wallet um, that I liked, so I don't mind it. I have mined Firo a little bit, not enough to get a payout. Um, same thing with Flux. Firo and Flux are both really good projects. Unfortunately, they're not very profitable in today, but um, usually they're up here at the top. So Flux and Firo, they're pretty good. Um, they don't have a whole lot of exchange support, but I do like their wallet support. Yeah. So it, that'll go somewhere eventually. Everything else I'm here is I don't really care about. Like no. you can mine Ycash using <laughs> Gminer if you want. I think you mine Grin too. Um, but yeah, Bitcoin Gold um, could be an awesome project. It's just not. Um, yeah, that's it. It's just not a good product. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, that's with a 1050 Ti. Now, so if you're making... basically, you can figure out what coin is the most profitable. He didn't go over this at the beginning. What to mine tells you what coin is the most profitable with your GPU or GPUs. Like you can put that you have a 2080, a 1050, yeah. and a 3070 Ti in there, and it will tell you what is the most sure. profitable. If you, if you put these four random ones, your profitability will be, um, oh, calculate. Let me calculate it. Okay. Your profitability will be five dollars and fifty cents a day if you mine Nexoa, um, four dollars and thirty-one cents a day. Let me see what's the power cost. Let's say you're doing forty cents per kilowatt hour, like you are in California. So what's profitable? Um, revenue profit. So revenue is going to be. Wait, what? So you're going to make five dollars and fifty cents, and it's going to take away. After the electricity, four dollars and nineteen cents. So you're gonna make about a okay. buck a day. Yeah. So I don't ever actually put in my um, electrical cost because for a long time I haven't known what it was. So I'm not really used to doing that, and I probably should get into it because um, that's what like everyone else in this space does. So yeah. yeah. If um, we remove, can we show? Okay, you just gotta do it individually. So with my um, with my rig, I use 13080 Ti, and I have to adjust some of these usually. Like Kapow is actually 60. I get 60. Progpow, I get 60 as well. Firopow, I, I get 60. It. And um, let's say Ethereum, I get 120. Now. That is stock. It is giving you the stock option. We overclock because we know what to do and yeah. how to. You that, could that's always the reason look up how to overclock your exact card down to the bottom. Hash, I don't remember. I don't remember what my echo hash was. When but now, I now it. run but yeah. calculates, guy. Oh yeah, calculate. Um. So yeah, Nexo. Uh, I need to look into this project. Obviously, it's it's at the top all the time. Yeah, it's very profitable. Recent difficulty spike. Yeah. So I will definitely look into Nexo. Uh, because I've I've never heard of this until I looked today. Yeah. Um I will I will look into it because it uses the same algorithm as Ravencoin. So if it's a better project, then I'll start I'll start talking about Nexo. I'll become an expert in Nexo and forget Ravencoin. I'm just kidding. I have a whole lot of holdings in Ravencoin, so I will definitely still um be into Ravencoin. Yeah. And it's a Ravencoin's a great product. It's not it's not something I'm just gonna be like, oh, it's not profitable. I don't care about it anymore it's gonna it's gonna be around for a while oh yeah uh, that's that's mining profitability that's how profitable you can be mining yeah. um good places for research on coins coin, coin gecko, gecko. Yep. say uh ave what's ave you go you look at it you're like oh let me look at this they got their social accounts you know go to markets and you can find out all the places you can buy and trade it yeah. and whatnot um, we go back to this, and you can see like just general. Let's go to general, and you can see all the things you want to know about it. Like market cap is important. It's got a million dollar, a billion dollar market cap, one point two billion. All all, all sorts right. of random things you want to know. We will be putting Same. all of these links down in the description, as promised. Um, 
We don't want to same take too much coin market cap. Literally the same thing. We don't want to be taking too much more of your time. Go ahead and let's go back to our full cameras here. Um, crypto bubbles visualize the market. We already yeah. went over that. We'll, we'll have all of these links in the description. We're gonna get that all set up right now. But let's stop sharing our screen. We're gonna go back to our full camera. All right. Well, that was our starter episode. That was our pilot. We're going to see how it does. We're not obviously just going to be like, oh, we just didn't do very well. We're going to stop. We're going to make multiple more episodes and figure out how we like it, how you guys like it, and how the viewers react to it, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, watch out for a deep dive into Ravencoin. That's going to be the title. So we're, I'm going to tell you everything I know about Ravencoin. And, and I'm going to probably learn where, a few more things. <laughs> where we do individuals sections on this podcast which won't be this long when we podcast together it will be this long if not longer the max we'll ever go is three hours obviously we don't want to go too long but yeah the max probably will, two and a half should be our half, max yeah. like if, if we see two and a half we're like okay we got to shut this operation down and yeah. save it for later like we're max like, okay, for here's like, the topics we're going to save for later you know <laughs> like max will do for individual will be maybe an hour but most of the time this podcast will be Shifty and Sky because it is Shifty and Sky's tech talk. Well, hope hopefully for the um for the individual ones, we want those to be snappy. So like, um maybe ten to twenty minutes. Yeah, if if that. But we yeah, uh, like if we can if we can get the information out in five minutes, then we're cutting the video and it's gonna be very snappy, clickbait title and well not clickbait but like clickable, yeah. clickable title, clickable thumbnail. But yeah, we have we appreciate you guys watching very much. Um. We hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, we are going to go through and edit this right now, which is going to take a long time. But we appreciate you guys very much. Um, this has been uh, Shifty and Sky's Tech Talk. We'll see Shifty you guys Sky's later. Tech Talk. Peace.